السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي my brothers and sisters welcome to our live webinar on the topic how to prepare for productive ramadan walhamdulillah first and foremost we praise and we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us this opportunity to interact in a time where we see lockdown everywhere subhanallah glory be to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has helped us to be able to present to you this vital topic about the greatest of all months ramadan my brothers and sisters at the outset i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this dua allahumma balighna ramadan o oh allah help us to reach out ramadan to help ourselves to be able to witness this greatest of all months ramadan my beloved brothers and sisters inshallah in this live webinar i'm going to take you to a journey a journey to make our ramadan inshallah most productive and this journey will have inshallah stations or stages or aspects of Ramadan and we will try to look at each aspect in a way that we can inshallah with the help and the permission of Allah make each and everything each and every aspect most productive so as you know the live webinar is on the topic how to prepare for a productive Ramadan now let us first look at the outcome of the uh webinar you know what are we going to actually achieve from this live webinar and when we actually understand and set as an outcome inshallah it will help us to direct our thought process and direction uh, in order to achieve the maximum now the first and foremost outcome of the webinar inshallah is to gain and enrich ourselves with knowledge knowledge my beloved brothers Uh, and sisters in islam is absolutely essential you see it is important to prepare for ramadan with a with a key element of knowledge if we don't know what exactly we are going to do and how we are going to do then the destination uh, we cannot reach properly so inshallah through this webinar we will highlight the main elements of uh you know knowledge about the uh, ramadan number 2 it will be an inspiration you know the pious people of the past they used to prepare for ramadan 6 months prior to ramadan allahu akbar look at it 6 months before they used to start preparing for ramadan and subhanallah we are less than a week uh you know to hit ramadan inshallah to reach out to ramadan so better than you know uh, uh then not planning at all not preparing at all alhamdulillah alhamdulillah we are here to prepare ourselves for ramadan and that itself is an inspirational thing always remember and understand my beloved brothers and sisters we need to have three c's remember three c's in order to make it most productive and subhanallah ramadan is is not an exception in fact ramadan is is a golden opportunity for us to tab on for any you know thing to be productive it needs to have certain things in the light of islam in the light of the quran and the teachings of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam any deed for it to be acceptable by allah it requires three essential conditions and subhanallah if you want to make it productive obviously it will be productive only after it is being accepted by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
Otherwise, we will be doing so many things. And it, at the end of the day, if our struggle, if our workout is not being accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then what is the use? There is no point of so much of hard work without, without fulfilling certain basic conditions. What are those conditions? Number one, it should be done with pure faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning, we should always have complete and dedicated faith in Allah alone to be a deity, to be worthy of worship without association of any partners and peers. That's number one. Number two, it should be done for the sake of Allah. Every effort that we do, it must be for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number three, we need to ensure that the productivity to achieve, we have to follow the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So believe in Allah with pure faith. Number two, for the sake of Allah to in the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Once we have this package very clear in our minds, these fundamentals very clear, we will have three C's. Number one, clarity. We know for whom we are doing. Number three, uh, number two, we will have clear conviction, ha- have that belief to, to inspire us to do that which is good. And number three, consciousness. We are conscious of what we are doing at every level, inshallah. So, inspiration and knowledge. Number three, areas of focus. Obviously, we need to know which area we need more productivity, inshallah, which can be acceptable, uh, acceptable by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And two, it can be accelerated as well. Number four, ways to achieve productivity. So inshallah, during this live webinar, we will talk about how you can actually, uh, you know, understand and find ways to make all those seven aspects most productive that we are going to touch base on. Finally, obviously, you know, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, you know, when the Ramadan comes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the doors of Jannah and shut down the doors of Jahannam. So the paradise, the doors of paradise are opened. And this whole workout is with a key objective that we gain Jannah, the highest levels of Jannah, inshallah. So this is in a nutshell, the outcome of the webinar. Now, my beloved brothers and sisters, I would like to ask this question to myself and ask you to close your eyes and take a pause for a few seconds and ask this question. How was my last Ramadan? How was your last Ramadan? Take a pause and rewind your memories. Back in 2019, how was your last Ramadan. How was it? Was it really fruitful? Did you do a lot of things? Well, alhamdulillah, if you have missed some things, time is now to ensure that you do that which you did not do last Ramadan. So inshallah, just close your eyes for a few seconds and think, how was your last Ramadan? Alhamdulillah. I hope it was good. Alhamdulillah. And it was fruitful. But excellence is what we want to achieve in our lives. In dunya and in akhirah. So let's make this Ramadan the best Ramadan ever in our lives. Right? What is Ramadan in general? Let's have a look at it. What is Ramadan in general? You see, Ramadan is the ninth month in the Islamic calendar. And Quran was revealed in the month of Ramadan, as we said, Shahru Ramadan al-Ladi, unzila fi quran The month of fasting, obviously, the obligatory fast, you know, it was prescribed in the month of Ramadan. It's definitely a blessing, uh, a mercy, you know, a month of forgiveness, subhanAllah. The month to achieve Jannah, for sure, right? And in it, as I said, the doors of Jannah are opened and the doors of Jahannam 
hellfire are closed and shayateen are chained. The rewards, subhanallah, it goes from one, you know, 10 to 700 times. And subhanallah, Allah knows how much reward he will give to us. In it is a night better than 10, uh, 1000 months, subhanallah, almost 87 years in one night you can gain. So imagine if you have achieved, inshallah, and I ask Allah for all of us to give this blessed night, Laylatul Qadr. If you witness 10 nights, for example, of Laylatul Qadr, you have 870 years of ibadah, of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a gift indeed, isn't it? By the way, uh, let me remind you, inshallah, just to make sure that you, you know, uh, subscribe our YouTube channel of Almana Center and, re- you know, ring the bell so that, you know, you will be able to uh, be notified, inshallah, for our future programs, which we uh, upload on our channel. Now, uh, let us carry on uh, understanding the real and the key benefits of Ramadan. You see, if we don't understand the Ramadan as a whole, we will be in- uh, you know, not able to reap it out the most. Number one, it's a training. Subhanallah. Ramadan is indeed training, right? It's a training period. It's a preparing, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a time of preparation. You know, we prepare from our body, from our soul, you know, our heart and so many things. Subhanallah. Empowering Allahu Akbar. We empower our faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more in the month of Ramadan than any other months. True or not? We empower our faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by getting closer to Him by performing so many good deeds. Servicing. It's a month of servicing. We cleanse ourselves. You know, it's like overhauling. Throughout all 11 months, we sin, we disobey, we, we do mistakes, we have shortcomings, so on and so forth. And this is the month we take a break. We take a break. And we try to service our body as well as soul. So it's a month of servicing. It's a month of programming. It's a month of programming towards righteousness. So Allah Rabbul Izzah, He gifted this month in order to give us the environment, that platform in order to perform that which is good. And in it, in it doing wrong things becomes a lot of you know, uh, uh, difficult, subhanallah. It becomes so difficult that you don't easily approach those things. Alhamdulillah. So these are the general benefits of the month of Ramadan. Now, the main question, right? How to spend productive Ramadan? Right, let's me, let me just take you through. How to spend productive Ramadan? Now, I will, inshallah, share with you top 10 ways how you can actually make your Ramadan most productive. Now, when we look at the first pointer, intention. You know, intention is something which we all need to Uh, ensure that we keep up that intention. Number one, to make sure that we have an intention to witness the month of Ramadan, number one. Number two, we should have an intention to perform the best deeds ever in our lives in the month of Ramadan so that we may continue further. Number three, we intend to accept all the deeds performed by us, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So intention is the basic fundamental thing that we need to make our Ramadan most productive. So it begins from our intention. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ Your actions are depend on your intentions, right? Number two, we need to have a prayer, a dua. Allahumma balighna Ramadan. Oh Allah, help us to witness the month of Ramadan. So when we have this this niya to uh, to witness the month of Ramadan, we need to make it and pronounce it uh, a, a dua which is 
taught by our, the pro- our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So when we pray, inshallah, Allah is there to accept our prayer. Now, subhanallah, when we, when we look at Islam, it does not just give us the, uh, the thing to, uh, to do, but it also helps us with the way how we can actually achieve it. So number one, we set up our intention. Number two, we pray for witnessing it. Number three, we need to plan. If we fail to plan, we plan to fail. That's completely true. So we need to plan Ramadan uh, now. Right now, you need to take a pen and paper and plan your Ramadan to make it productive. Because we plan for everything, isn't it? We plan for our weddings, we plan for our uh, celebrations, we plan for everything, subhanAllah. So when the greatest guest, the greatest of all months, Ramadan is coming, we need to plan for that, right? We need to prepare, we need to prepare, we need to prepare now for Ramadan, right? What am I going to do? How am I going to do? Uh, how can I accelerate? How can I achieve excellence, you know, in the month of Ramadan? So impactful so that inshallah, even after Ramadan, I will be able to be productive, right? That's the purpose because we are not Ramadan Muslims. We are Muslims until we die, inshallah. We need to have this clear understanding of programming. You know, we need to have this this programming in our minds. Subhanallah, if if we actually don't have that mental, uh, you know, uh, 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 thought process of how I can make it productive, we cannot make it productive. So apart from having an intention, a good intention, apart from having uh, said a, a, a dua, having a plan, with the preparation, we need to program our mind. You know, for example, you share it with, Many people, you know what? Ramadan is coming. Ramadan is coming. How are you going to spend Ramadan? I'm going to spend Ramadan, inshallah, by the will and the uh, per, you know, permission of Allah, like this and like this and like this. So you have a plan to share. So you can also be a contributor in making others Ram- Ramadan most productive. Number six, you need to ensure, you know, that you prioritize the preparations uh, of Ramadan. You know, many a times people do shopping, uh, you know, during the month of Ramadan. They do other things during the month of Ramadan. Understand, my beloved brothers and sisters, Ramadan comes once a year, that to only for a month. So make sure that you keep the ibadah, the pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala act number one. Prioritize it so that inshallah you can achieve your objective to gain the highest levels of Jannah. Number seven, practice what you prepare. So when you want to really make your Ramadan productive, you need to act on your plan, right? Think like a man of action as the saying goes. Think like a man of action and act like a man of thought. So when you plan, when you have a thought, Act on that thought. That will help you to be productive. Purify. Purify your heart. You know, you are approaching the beautiful and and glorious month of Ramadan. Clean your heart by seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and forgiving others as well. You know, don't keep any grudges, any, uh, you know, bad feelings uh, of others. Just purify yourself. That is also very productive. Promote, promote, you know, tell people, you know what, Ramadan is coming. Ramadan is coming. When you tell people, when you inform people, when you promote Ramadan uh, and the blessings about Ramadan to others, obviously you will get in action. And that will help you and trigger you to make your Ramadan most productive. Patience, have patience, have sabr, have that stability, that firmness in your faith. And this is something which is required throughout the month of Ramadan. You know, you need to abstain from so many things. You need to do hard work in so many things. So sabr is an element. Patience is an element that will help you to drive your objective to make your Ramadan most productive and ultimately gain the highest levels of Jannah by pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Now, what are those focus areas that are we going to talk about? We, we, uh, that was just the introductory part, uh, you know, uh, uh, of this live webinar. Uh, by the way, you can also ask questions by sending, uh, you know, uh, to us on the context of uh, how we can make it productive Ramadan, inshallah. Uh, you need to understand that the, you, unless and until you define the areas, how you can actually focus on productivity in Ramadan. So I have listed a few areas, inshallah, which are the most common areas, uh, which inshallah, if we focus with the uh, way uh, uh, of hard work and sincerity, inshallah, we will gain productivity. Number one, relationship with the Quran, right? Ramadan is the month of Quran, so we need to develop very strong relationship with the Quran. Number two, Salah, like never before. We need to, uh, you know, revive and refine our Salah with quality and with quantity in the month of Ramadan, so the effect of it can go on, inshallah. Number three, Psalm, like never before. So, this year's fasting, inshallah, it should be far more better than your last fasting. Meaning, you need to make this fasting most productive. And we'll discuss how, inshallah. Number four, remembrance of Allah like never, never before. Dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you need to ensure that it should be done in a way that it was never done before. Right? So every day your Ramadan should become better and better. And subhanAllah, don't ever pump shaitan by saying or by thinking, you know what, perhaps I can't go to masjid. Uh, you know, I have no facility. I, I don't get that environment of masjid. How can I, you know, uh, deal with this issue? Uh, I, I need to do, uh, you know, a lot of ibadah in the masjid. Look, my brothers and sisters, I take a note on, on, on this point and, and, and remind myself and you, everything is planned by Allah Azza wa Jal. Everything, right? Without an exception. Allah is the planner of everything. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decided and his decision is like this, subhanAllah, just accept it and find out ways and alternatives how you can make Ramadan most productive. As I said, your niya, your intention must be absolutely to reach excellence. And this is how you need to drive yourself throughout the month of Ramadan. So if masajids are locked, you know, and you can't go out, it should not matter much. You need to create that environment. I know it's challenging. I know it's challenging. But what can we do? We need to, you know, uh, accept the decision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and move forward. So, azkar or dhikr like never before, inshallah. We will discuss how. The sixth and the seventh year is making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like never before, right? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at this moment to give cure to those who are afflicted with this COVID-19, this pandemic coronavirus. And we ask Allah to protect each and every one of us from this disease, coronavirus, and other diseases as well. The seventh, uh, you know, way uh, that we will focus on, inshallah, is other, you know, uh, uh, voluntary acts. So let's begin, inshallah. Oh, I'm sorry. So uh, the fifth one was repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remember akhirah. Sixth one was making dua. And the seventh one is to perform other voluntary acts. Let's begin with the first focus area. The first focus area is have a strong relationship with the Quran. You see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has given the best and the biggest gift. And that is Quran. Subhanallah. This is the greatest gift of guidance for you and me and for the entire humanity. What are those ways that we can, inshallah, look and focus on in terms of making our relationship better and better every single day, every single moment with the Quran? So I have shared here, you know, inshallah, 10 ways we will discuss 
10 ways how we can actually make our relationship with the Quran most strong, inshallah. And that is how we can make our Ramadan most productive. You see, if you are distinct from the Quran, how you can make your Ramadan most productive? It, it is not possible, right? So let's make sure that we have strong relationship with the Quran. The question is how? Number one, believe in it. Believe in it that it is revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in wording and in meaning. Number one, believe that it was sent through Angel Gabriel. Believe that it was sent to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Arabic language and it is recorded and preserved and will be preserved until the last day as Allah Almighty took up the responsibility of preserving it. This is what we need to have a belief in it and to believe that it contains the best stories and the authentic stories of all the prophets. It contains the complete guidance. So when we say Islam is a way of life, how do we actually get the rulings and the direction and the guidance of Islam from Quran? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent down the Quran and we need to believe that it contains the best solution and the best guidance for our way of life to be successful in this world and the hereafter. So Allah Almighty says in Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah number 2, Ayah number 177, that it is not righteousness that you face here and there, but it is important that you believe so Allah mentioned about all the articles of faith and he mentioned about the belief in the books revealed and sent down by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So number one, we need to believe in it. Once we have that belief, by default, we will be motivated and encouraged to go further. What is further? We need to recite it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, Read, recite in the name of your Lord who created you. So recitation of the Quran, it definitely builds our relationship with the Quran. It develops a very deep relationship with the Quran. So you need to have a very clear, defined, strategic plan in place for the recitation of the Quran during the month of Ramadan, right? In order to make your Ramadan most productive. Obviously, you will never be able to gain the full fruits from the Quran and, uh, and your recitation unless you understand it, right? You need to understand what Allah is saying to you, what Allah is informing you about. This is a message, right? So Allah Almighty, He gives us this message. Allah Rabbul Izzah, he says in Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah number 2, Ayah number 185, the Ayah with which I began my session. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Shahru Ramadan Alladhi Unzila Fihi Al-Quran, Hudallin Nas, Wa Bayyinatin Min Al-Huda, Wal Furqan. It was the month of Ramadan in which Allah Almighty revealed and sent down the glorious Quran so that the, it becomes like a guidance for the whole of humanity, for the whole of humanity, without any exception, right? And it acts like Furqan, a criterion from judging right and wrong. So understand the Quran is a book of guidance. So you will never be able to get guided unless you understand it. And subhanAllah, Allah states in so many places in Surah Al-Qamar alone, uh, in Surah Qamar, Surah number 54, I number 17, And it is we who've made the Quran easy to remember and understand. Is there anyone to take heed? Is there anyone wants to take benefit? Allah is saying that I made it easy to remember and understand. So Allah made it easy. Understand it and get guidance. Number four, memorize it. You know, it doesn't matter how much, how much ever you can, ayah by ayah, surah by surah, you know, short surahs to begin with. But you should have a plan, an agenda in your life to memorize as much as you can the glorious Quran. Without having the memorization of the Quran in your heart, 
how can you build the relationship with the Quran stronger? Yes, you might have a very shallow belief in the Quran. You might have, you know, here and there understanding of the Quran. But then when you have Quran in your storage, in your heart, in your mind, subhanallah, it will be uh, a good news for you because the more you have the Quran in your heart, the higher your level will be in dunya and akhirah. Reflect on it. You know, the relationship to develop you, with Quran, you need to reflect, have a deeper look. It's just not recitation. It's reflection. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Surah number 47, ayah number 24. Allah rabbul izzah says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَّبَرُونَ Quran أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا Do they not ponder and reflect over the Quran or are their hearts are locked upon? Allahu Akbar. If we don't take a d- deeper dive in the Quran, it is as though we have locks on our heart. So subhanAllah, my brothers and sisters, in order to develop strong relationship with Quran, we need to reflect over the glorious Quran. Number six, judge your life by it. Judge your life by the Quran, Allah states it as Furqan, a criterion to judge right from wrong. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he gave this beautiful guidance of the Quran, judge your lives by it. Then only you will be able to gain the relationship with the Quran and you will be able to get the solution for the problems of uh, mankind. Subhanallah, when was the last time when there was a dispute or a conflict? or an issue, or a problem, or a difficulty that you had, and you looked at by opening the Quran, Oh Allah, I have this issue. I have fought with my loved ones. How can I resolve it? I have this financial issue. How can I get the solution? Find it through the Quran, and you will have the solution that you are looking for. Practice it. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal nas, qad ja'atkum mawizatum min rabbikum, wa shifa'un lima fi sudur, wa hudan wa rahmatun lil mu'mineen. O mankind, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh mankind, here is an instruction for you. Here is an instruction, the glorious Quran for you. And it is a solution for the problems that you have. It's a shifa of all the problems, of all the difficulties, of all your issues. This Quran is the solution for you. And this belief must be very much strong in our hearts. Then only we can build our relationship with the Quran. And it's only then our Ramadan can be most productive. So practicing the glorious Quran in our lives, as we know, as per the records about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, Kana khuluquhul Quran. He was like a walking Quran. He was like a Quran. Subhanallah. It was the whole life of the Prophet was like the Quran. The Quran in action. Subhanallah. Remind yourself by it. So, Subhanallah. The glorious Quran, it's a, 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 a uh, a dhikr, you know, subhanallah, when we want to remember our reality, go back to the Quran. When we want to know where we belong and to whom we belong, go to the Quran. And we want to remind others, remind them with the Quran. This Quran is a dhikr. Inna wa inna lahu so the glorious Quran is a dhikr. Remind people by it. You know, not by, you know, uh, arguing in a way that is not uh, uh, approved by the Quran, not in a way which is by others, but remind them with the Quran and remind yourself by the Quran. Mind, promote it, you know, promote the Quran. The Prophet ﷺ said, propagate and promote and take it forward the ayah, even if you know one ayah. Subhanallah, promoting the Quran also builds your relationship with the Quran. 
it tells so much it reflects so much if your you know non believers uh, 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 who do not believe in islam those people who are non muslims let them know about the quran because quran is for them as well as we said hudallinas it's a guidance for the humanity so it's your and my responsibility to take this message of the quran to others those who don't know about it and subhanallah ramadan is a beautiful month to share about the message of the quran allahu akbar and subhanallah that is the reason allah rabbul izza praised the one who takes uh, this message to others and who invites people to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by saying وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِّي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Who is better in speech than the one who calls people to Allah, does righteous deeds, and says, I am among the Muslims. So, promote the Qur'an. That's how you develop your relationship with the Qur'an. Teach it to others. The best way to develop your link with the Qur'an is teach it to others. Subhanallah, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَهِ The best of you are those who learn the Qur'an and teach it to others. Subhanallah, this is how we actually, you know, develop our relationship with the Qur'an. Subhanallah, my brothers and sisters, it is important that we fulfill. These are like rights of the Qur'an. These are like duties that we have towards the Qur'an. When we fulfill our duties towards the Qur'an, when we fulfill our rights of the Qur'an, believe me, my brothers and sisters, mark these words, you will establish a very powerful link and relationship with the glorious Qur'an. That's the focus area number one. Focus area number two, and that is how to make our salah most productive. Subhanallah, the idea of making Ramadan, remarkable Ramadan, productive Ramadan, is to look at those areas which we perform the most. And subhanallah, salah is something which we perform uh, a lot. And this is how we need to en ensure that we make our salah most productive. So, Let's look at the way how we can actually make our salah most productive. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, Innani an Allah, la ilaha illa ana fa'budni wa aqimi salah li dhikri. Most certainly, I am your Allah. And there is no one worthy of worship apart from me. So establish salah, you know, establish salah in my remembrance. So what we come to know is salah is a very powerful way of linking with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my beloved brothers in his, and sisters in Islam, uh, it is important to make this area also very, very powerful. And subhanallah, when we make our salah most productive, we will be, inshallah, able to gain the most of the salah. So I have five Ps in order to make our salah most productive. Number one, prepare. You know, uh, uh, have this 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 mental programming. So first is to pre to pr program in your mind about salah, and your programming it begins from the time of adhan. It begins from the time of Adhan, how you are going to make your Salah most productive. So when you listen to Adhan, when you uh, have this, this conviction and this reflection on Adhan, when you reply to Adhan, when you pray after the Adhan, the dua that we have, you know, when you have this connection built up at the time of Adhan, that makes your Salah to begin with productivity. So you started mentally the programming towards Salah. You program yourself that you know what? Here is a time where I have to present myself and meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's number one. Program yourself mentally, you know, from the time of Adhan. 
Number two, prepare. Dress up well. Wear something nice, clean, tidy clothes and properly do wudu. You know, this is the preparation, part of a preparation to make your salah productive. As a result, your Ramadan will also be productive. Try to understand that there is no better opportunity for you to prepare to be presentable in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than anything else, right? For you, the most important thing is to prepare for salah with the proper dress, proper wudu. And if you are praying like, for example, Zuhar or Asr, you need to know mentally which surah are you going to recite so that you will have a better concentration on it. And if you, uh, you know, in general, you can choose which masjid you can, you know, you know, you, you can go inshallah so that, you know, have that uh, preparation in your mind. You're traveling and you need to map it out on your direction, which masjid uh, falls in your way, uh, how you can actually ensure that you pray on time. That's preparation, part of preparation. Number three, perform. You need to perform. You know, this is the actual practice that you have. During your salah, have full focus. You know, leave aside all the thoughts that come in your mind because now you are in meeting with Allah subhanahu who is absolutely high in position and you just can't, uh, you know, afford to uh, divide your concentration. Will you talk to someone during that time? Of course not. Will you think anything else? Uh, uh, at that time, of course not. This is Allah, the Lord of the heavens and the earth, whom you are meeting. And this is something which is so beautiful way of performance. So make your performance as the best. You know, as the Prophet wasallam, he said, pray as if you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Although you don't see, but Allah, Rabbul Izzah, he sees you. So excellence is what you need to achieve from salah. Subhanallah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa taught us the ways and the means. And Allah Rabbul Izzah, he says, Qad aflaha al-mu'minun. Allah Rabbul Izzah, he says, successful are those who believe. Alladheena hum fi salatihim khashi'oon. Those who establish salah, those who pray salah with what? With humbly submissiveness, with that excellence in their book. Total behavior and actions and intentions purely and dedicatedly for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number four P is ponder. Ponder what you are reciting. You know, when you know the meanings of what you're reciting, it becomes a lot more better for you to concentrate on salah. For example, even if it is to say Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar is something which is so prominent in salah if you know the meaning of allahu akbar allah is the greatest that that means nothing is more greater to you than allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no one is greater than allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so you are fully devoted to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you say subhana rabbi al-a'la while in sujood you glory be to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the most high so when you know the meanings of salah, uh, you know the, the surahs that you're going to recite and the portions that you recite throughout the salah, it becomes much more easier to concentrate and to ponder as well. Plan uh, for the next salah. You know, the final P is plan for the next salah. So when you know that you have gained so much of strength from salah, so much of positivity, so much of hope, so much of support, so much of goodness, uh, you know, and, and, and help. Subhanallah, as Allah says in Surah Baqarah, Surah number 2 and number 45, بِالصَّبْرِ salah. Seek the help of Allah through patience and what? Prayer. Through salah and sabr, you actually gain the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my beloved brothers and sisters, this is how you make your salah most productive, insha'Allah. And when you have this thing in mind, you are eager for the next salah. You wait, when is my next salah? So that I can again go back fully dedicated 
uh, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you have these five Ps, programming, preparation, performance, pondering, and plan for the next, inshallah, you will gain productivity in salah. And this is something which is beautiful. And this is something you can actually make your Ramadan most productive as well. My beloved brothers and sisters, the next area for us to focus on is something which is very closely connected with Ramadan. And that is productive fasting. So what is Som? Som is to refrain or to restrain or to abstain ourselves from something that is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So through Som, you actually... Uh, you know, abstain yourself from uh, food and drink and what is mentioned, uh, you know, any physical uh, activity in a way that is, uh, you know, that will break your fast, you know. So you you control yourself from dawn till dusk in order to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is fasting. That is so for a prescribed, uh, you know, limited uh, of time. It is an obligation, of course, for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah number 2, Ayah number 183, Ya amanu, kutiba alaykum usiyam, kama kutiba ala ladhina min qablikum, la'allakum tattaqoon. So, fasting is prescribed to you as it was prescribed to the people who came before you. So, it's a prescription and it's a command by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is also a pillar of, his, of Islam. You know, among the five pillars and the foundations of Islam, Saum is one of them. Fasting is one of the pillars of, uh, you know, Islam as we know. The real and true purpose of fasting is given at the end of the ayah. So that you may gain consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, the whole purpose of the fasting, the whole objective, outcome, end result of fasting is you gain taqwa. So day one, if you fast and you don't gain taqwa, what is taqwa? Taqwa comes from the root word waqaya, which means to have a barrier between right and wrong. To have a barrier in short, in a nutshell, from things which are displeasing to Allah and pleasing to Allah. So you are on the other side pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you keep a barrier. Anything that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you put a barrier on it. So, number one, think the day one of Ramadan when you fast and if you have gained that consciousness, that taqwa uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, have you gained it or not? Always introspect. Ask yourself this question. Am I really reaping out the benefit of fasting? Am I achieving the objective of the fasting? If yes, well, alhamdulillah, I need to get in better way. And if I'm not, then I need to make sure that I fulfill the uh, the right of the of fasting and gain the objective from it, and that is taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Obviously, there are so many virtues of fasting. And subhanallah, when we want to be productive in our fast, these virtues will help us and, and gives us, you know, like, uh, 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 like a boosting, you know, uh, element for us to be productive in our fasting. Subhanallah, number one, as the, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said very clearly in the hadith, مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمْ مِنْ ذَنْبِ Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever observes fast during the month of Ramadan, out of sincere faith and hoping to attain Allah's rewards, then all his past sins will be forgiven. Here it is mentioned about the minor sins. All his minor sins will be forgiven. What a beautiful, uh, you know, uh, moment for us to reflect that this is some of uh, one of the powerful ways to uh, eradicate our, uh, you know, uh, minor sins, inshallah. And also the the fasting is something which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself said that fasting is for me. 
and I shall reward it. Subhanallah. Fasting has a reward which has no measure. It's only Allah who knows best. And subhanallah, Allah will definitely give us what is best. If a person fasts with sincere, you know, faith, having the hope of reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, he will enter from a special door dedicated for Sa'imun, for those who fast. We know the name of the door is Babur Rayyan. This door of Jannah is dedicated for those who fast. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to enter from this door as well, inshallah, apart from other doors as well. It's a means to achieve the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My beloved brothers and sisters, whenever Allah gives us something as a command, it is to make us, uh, you know, closer to Him. It is an opportunity that helps us to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So make sure that you take this opportunity. Make sure that you utilize this opportunity. And subhanallah, fasting and, and the Quran is something which we have to ensure and engraved in our hearts and minds that these are the two things that will come as an intercession on the day of judgment and their intercession will be accepted. You know, fasting will come as an intercession, as an intercessor and say, Oh Allah, I refrain uh, from uh, him from food, from, uh, you know, uh, uh, sexual desires and from drink. Oh Allah, accept the, the intercession and Allah Rabbul Izza will accept both the Quran and some, uh, you know, the Quran and the, and the fasting. Allah Rabbul Izza will accept the uh, shifa, the, the intercession from both of them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive us. So there are remarkable, uh, you know, blessings and the favors uh, uh, mentioned in uh, the Quran and Ahadith about fasting uh, because of which we must be completely and absolutely motivated to make our fasting as productive fasting, to make our Ramadan, the bigger goal, as the most productive job. That was our third focus area. Focus area number four. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He reminds us again and again in the Quran in different ways and forms to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the area number four. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like never before. Allahu Akbar. Your dhikr, your remembrance of Allah must be so beautiful, must be so pure, must be so uh, uh, powerful that it gives you strength and it gives you satisfaction. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, Allah bi dhikrillahi tatma'innu al with the remembrance of Allah to hearts find serenity, satisfaction, pleasure, happiness, joy, and goodness. Allahu Akbar. My brothers and sisters, satisfaction is something which we cannot buy from any market. We cannot buy from any shop, from any mall. No. Satisfaction, itmanan, sakina, serenity, it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرُكُمْ Remember me so that I will remember you. So remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a very powerful way of making sure that you do zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, we need to also understand that remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expels the devil and weakens his plots. No doubt during the month of Ramadan, subhanallah, the bigger shayateen are chained as the Prophet said. But there are little ones, the minor ones which are there. So subhanallah, when you do zikr, you get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you make shaitan away from you. You distend yourself from shaitan. And shaitan runs away. He, go, he departs from you. When you 
engage yourself in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We take a, a minute of pause because of the azan, inshallah. <clears throat> so uh, we have a special event these days of Salat of Ibuyutikum. You know, pray your uh, you know Salah at your home, so uh, or in your homes. Subhanallah, this is uh, something which uh, that comes in my mind that you know the UAE authorities and you know other authorities as well uh, are reminding us again and again to pray at home, and that's uh, being you know safe for us and others as well. Inshallah, just a social message and uh, a reminder for myself and others. So we're talking about remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you and me want Allah to remember us, we need to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No doubt we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all times. We cannot, you know, prosper. We cannot, uh, you know, be without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need Allah rabbul isa And in order to uh, create the better, uh, you know, a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah Rabbul Izzah, He instructs us, He commands us, right, in the Quran to remember Him in the morning and in the evening, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He commands, it's a command by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? So, we need to ensure that we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we start remembering Allah now, inshallah, we will continue this practice again and again. And during the month of Ramadan, we will accelerate it. We will elevate and make it more intense to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As it also, my beloved brothers and sisters, it causes the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, when you love someone, you remember him. And we should love Allah the most. More than anyone and more than anything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who deserves all and every kind of highest love. Right? In our lives. So we give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, 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 that, that importance. And this is how we he deserves it. Subhanallah. Also my beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it helps us to be protected, to be protected from any kind of issues, any kind of, you know, problems. And to uh, if we are in a situation which are difficult, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us the ability to deal with it, to deal with it in a way that is, you know, uh, that is so beautiful and fruitful inshallah for all of us so uh, the focus area number four is remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like never before so make a dhikr plan you know you need to remember Allah from your heart you know call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from your heart and this is how you make your dhikr your remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more stronger focus area number five and that is Repent and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and akhirah. Repent and remember akhirah. So, tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly connects you to Allah. So here we actually do what? We acknowledge our relationship between Allah and us. Allah being our Rabb and we are His Abd. So, the master and slave that is the relationship that we have. Whenever there is any need of the ad, of the slave, he calls out to his rub, his master. This is tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whenever and uh, how much ever you can, will help us to gain his, uh, his forgiveness. Subhanallah. We all will agree that no one is immune from sins. Every one of us, without an exception, we commit sins. We show up our disobedience. We have shortcomings. What is the rescue? What is the way out? The way out is 
tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Going back to Allah azza wa jal is the way for us to gain cure in our lives for the disease called as sin. So subhanallah, repent with strong hopes. You know, don't be a, a person who think that, you know what, I have done so many things. Throughout my life, I have just disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have not done enough good deeds. I have done lot of bad deeds. Don't be hopeless. Have strong hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will forgive you. He will accept your repentance provided if it is sincere. So Allah Rabbul Izzah, he says something beautiful in Surah Az-Zumar, Surah number 39. Ayah number 51. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِي Say, O oh my slaves. Allah Rabbul Izzah, the way he, he, he beautifully mentions this and says this is so powerful, so loving. Allah says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِي O oh my slaves. الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أُنفُسِهِمْ And here Allah does, does not talk about the righteous slaves. The good slaves. No. Allah talks about those who have transgressed themselves. Who have gone away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who committed sins. Allah Rabbul Izzah. He says, الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ Those who have transgressed themselves. And we need to real, realize, my brothers and sisters, that when we do sin, when we commit mistake, we actually harm ourselves. Allah is not affected by that. Allah is not being, you know, in any way, you know, impacted with that. We are impacted. We will be hurt and harmed by our sins. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his mercy, he says, Ya ibadi, O my slaves, alladhina asrafu ala anfusihim, those who have transgressed themselves, la taqnatu min rahmatillah, do not despair from the mercy of Allah azza wa jal. Allahu Akbar. So, is a strong hope that we need to have in Allah Azza wa Jal that He will accept my repentance and I'm sincere. Ya Allah, I ask you to forgive me. Oh Allah, I sincerely repent to you. Ya Allah, forgive me. Ya Ghafar, forgive me. Ya Rahim, forgive me. Ya Allah, forgive me. So when you ask Allah Rabbul Isa for repentance, you turn to Him. You turn to him and subhanallah, Allah says, لا تقنط من رحمة الله Don't be despair from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا Allah will forgive all your sins. If you sincerely repent, be it major or minor, whatever it is, if you sincerely repent now, Allah is prepared and willing to forgive everything. Subhanallah. Why? Because he is ghafoor and he is rahim. He is oft forgiving, perpetual forgiver. And he is extremely and entirely merciful. Allah Azza wa Jal. My brothers and sisters, repent to Allah with strong hopes. Number two, there are amazing benefits of making istighfar. Subhanallah, we know uh, uh, according to the records of the ahadith, you know, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa used to seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from 70 to 100 times. Although his past, future and present sins were forgiven, right? But still, he taught us a lesson to seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we may gain the fruits, the blessing from in our mal, in our children, as mentioned Surah Al-Nuh, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He taught us when we seek forgive from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will send down the rain, the beneficial things, the barakah, the blessing will come in our wealth, in our children, and we will prosper, subhanallah. One of the powerful ways to increase the risk, the sustenance, the, uh, you know, your household, to gain the growth, if you want, Seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is how you actually 
repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is how you make your connection well with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is how you make your Ramadan most productive. Allahu Akbar. So, uh, amazing benefits uh, from uh, the istighfar. Repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also reflects that you have someone high above whom you can go once you have erred, when you do a sin, when you commit a mistake. This, it's not uh, something, a dead end. No. Subhanallah, Allah is willing and open. In Subhanallah, this is something so beautiful. Allah Rabbul Izza, He comes down on the lowest part of the heaven in the third, uh, in, the, in the last part of the night and ask who is there who wants to seek forgiveness so that I may forgive him or her. Allahu Akbar. It's an opportunity that Allah gives us every single day. In the last part of the night, Allah gives us this opportunity. Is there anyone to seek forgiveness? I will forgive. So my beloved brothers and sisters, it develops the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. And Allah Rabbul Izzah, He loves it as well. Innahu huwa tawwabur rahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is indeed tawwab. He is the one who accepts repentance. And subhanallah, Allah Rabbul Izzah, He says, Indeed, Allah loves those who repent. So when you repent, you gain the love of Allah and Allah will make you beloved as well. Allahu Akbar. What an amazing thing. When Allah makes us beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after committing a sin and when we sincerely repent, what else we want? Subhanallah. Also, my beloved brothers and sisters, don't be too much worried about uh, uh, you know yourself in a in a way that you doom yourself. Have that positivity, uh, positivity, that that good mindset, and having good hopes in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. You know, you uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is as as you think of Him. Subhanallah, as we know, I am as my servants think of me. As Allah Rabbi Izza, He says, you know, so have good thinking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have good thinking. For example, have a good thinking that, oh Allah, Allah will forgive me, inshallah. Allah will forgive me. Allah will admit me in the highest levels of Jannah. Allah will reveal His face to me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give me all bounties, inshallah. So have these positive thoughts in your mind about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that comes when you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, my beloved brothers and sisters, Tawbah also reflects that you have someone whom you will be accountable to. You know, when you take account of yourself in dunya, inshallah, you will be saved. And in the hereafter, you'll be able to prepare yourself to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you Willing and pleasing to meet Allah, Allah Rabbul Izza will be pleased to meet you as well. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He accepts repentance for those who are sincere, meaning acknowledge conditions of the fast, uh, of, of repentance are those, are the following. Number one, accept your sin that you have done it, acknowledge it. Number two, stop it immediately. Number three, have a good intention not to go back to it. Number four, have that remorse thought in your mind and continuously seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number five, if you have done something wrong to others, compensate it. Compensate it, right? So when you have sincere tawbah to Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is willing to forgive us, inshallah. That was area number five, or the focus, now area number five. Now the focus area number six, inshallah, uh, and that is dua. Dial up Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anytime. You don't get, you know, uh, his number busy. You don't get his, uh, his number switched off out of coverage area. No, 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 no. Subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can be reached out anytime, anywhere, you know, in any condition, subhanallah. You ask Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you inshallah. So 
Number one, dua is a command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ask for me and I will give it. You know, ud'uni, astajib lakum. Ask for me and I will give, inshallah. So it's a command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, it's a weapon of the believer. You know, dua is the sharpest and the strongest weapon of the believer. He can immediately connect himself with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the medium of dua. When you just say from your heart, sincerely, purely, calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by saying, Ya Allah. You know, when you say, La ilaha illallah, this is something which is so powerful. You know, that is the reason the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Kulu la ilaha illallah tuflihu. Those who say la ilaha illallah, there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will gain success. Right? So need to understand, we need to understand that dua is a weapon of the believer indeed. So uh, also understand that subhanallah dua is a, is worship. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he said, ad dua wa li ibada dua Calling out to Allah, asking Allah is itself a worship. Subhanallah. So you will be rewarded for the worship as an act of worship. Two, you are asking something for your own benefit. So you will be benefited as well. So this is beautiful, right? It develops strong and direct connection with your Rabb, with your Lord, with your Master. You know, you can ask for any dua, anything, whatever you want for yourself for your loved ones, for the whole of humanity, especially in these times, subhanAllah, where the whole world is struggling and striving and facing this challenge which no one could expect it to come. Coronavirus, COVID-19, dial up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He will answer His, you know, your prayers inshallah. Call out to Allah for the betterment of the, of the world, for the betterment of the people, for the betterment of your parents, number one, right? Uh, if they are alive, ask for their protection, for their, you know, having a blessed life. And if they are not alive, ask for their forgiveness in the hereafter. Subhanallah, they will have the levels uh, higher if you pray you know, for them, inshallah, as children, subhanallah. Dua, it must be done with full conviction, meaning that you should not have any, you know, mixed thoughts in your mind. Uh, for example, you shouldn't think, you know what, I'm asking Allah for this, but I don't know whether Allah will accept it or not. Never do that. Never think that, right? This thought process is satanic way. Always have high hopes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, Allah Rabbul Izzah, He says in Surah Al-Ali Imran, Surah number 3, and number 160, if Allah helps you, who can overcome you? You know, who can stop if Allah wants to give you? If Allah stops it, who can give? So let the believers put their entire trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my beloved brothers and sisters, it is important that we make dua with conviction with strong belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that inshallah my dua will be accepted. If it's not accepted immediately, it will be done after some time and we see in our lives. And if it's not accepted, it will be compensated with, with the uh, other challenges that we may uh, face. Uh, and if it's not accepted here, inshallah in Jannah, a person will see that his dua will act like the good deeds and it will help him to save his akhirah. Finally, reflect our slavery towards our master. We are dependent. Allah is as-samad. He is as-samad. He is the one who is independent, free from all needs. But the entire creation is in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my beloved brothers and sisters, in order to make your Ramadan most productive, make a habit of calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while walking, while sitting, while sleeping, you know, or when you are on the bed, call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, uh, this is how we make ourselves always connected 
with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and always we go on the path of making our Ramadan most productive inshallah. So this is what we need to ensure and understand that calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely make us more productive. Let us now look at the final focus area and that is performing the voluntary act. So Alhamdulillah, we talked about building the relationship with the Quran. We talked about how we can make our salah most productive. Uh, we also talked about how we can make our fasting most productive and fruitful by achieving its its uh, its fruit, its its objective, and that is taqwa. We also talked about you know how we can make our dhikr most productive and always be connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We also talked about how we can make our tawbah, our repentance, and remembering our akhirah, subhanallah, uh, uh, is something which is very, very important as well. So we talked about uh, the the making uh, ways how we can actually get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and making sure that we make this Ramadan the most in all these areas. Final area, and the final focus area, in fact, is the performance of voluntary acts. So as we know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, to him, the most beloved deeds are those which are, uh, you know, uh, the fard prayers. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he obviously gets closer and we can get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The best way is the faraiz. Fulfill your obligations as number one. So once you are done with the obligatory acts, now is the time where you want to reach what? Excellence, right? Excellence. So when you reach out to excellence, you need more deeds, more voluntary deeds in order to ensure that you gain more and more uh, during this great Ramadan. So for example, among the nawafil prayer is optional prayer, you know, uh, uh, after the obligatory ones, of course, uh, you pray taraweeh and other nawafil prayers, you know, uh, having that uh, khushu in your salah, focus on your quality of salah, not on quantity, uh, optional prayer. Uh, always have this pure and clean heart. You know, Allah Rabbul Izza to him, uh, he accepts only qalbun salim, you know, the uh, pure heart, the uh, perfect heart, the, the conditioned heart. He doesn't accept that which is impure, right? So show your best behavior, you know, your akhlaq as well, and be merciful to others as well. Uh, and you can actually uh, do any type of charity, you know, apart from the zakah, if you're eligible to, apart from zakah, which is the mandatory, the obligatory charity, apart from that, sadaqah, you know, voluntary charity to, to your among your own relatives, do it. Yeah, uh, you know, among your neighbors, do it in your society, do it. You know, with with uh, those who are poor, needy, destitute. You know, orphans. Whatever ways that you can find out, you need to plan all these things. By the way, in order to make your Ramadan most productive, you need to point out these things in order to make sure that you. Act upon it. Remember what is what we said. Apart from planning, we need to act upon the plan. So these all things go under your plan, and your practice will make you to act upon. Inshallah. So feeding the poor is something which is so rewardable in the month of Ramadan. For example, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "The one who helps to uh, the other person to break the fast, he will be rewarded equally." Subhanallah. So you fast, you gain the reward for yourself, and he you feed the one who fasts and he breaks the fast with your foot you will be rewarded equally, inshallah. So have this budget allocation, you know, uh, the team mobilization, have this uh, proper, complete, robust plan for you to drive this charity campaign, you know, in a way that is productive, inshallah. Help people, help people, subhanallah. This is something which we need to talk about uh, uh, time and again. You know, if you help, uh, uh, help people, Allah will help you. If you're kind to people, Allah will be kind to you. If you're merciful to others, Allah will be merciful to you. If you forgive people, Allah will forgive you. So my beloved brothers and sisters, ensure that you strive hard. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in Surah An-Kabut, the last ayah, 
آئے نمبر سکسٹی نائن جاہد فینا لنہ دین سبلنا و ان اللہ لما المحسنین اللہ رب العزہ he says those who strive in our way Allah will open doors for them open opportunities for them which they never imagined and Allah loves those who are good doers so always be among those who are good doers be among those who are conscious muttaqeen be among those who are mukhlisin who are sincere be among those who are muqsitin who are just be among those who are tawabin who seek repentance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be among those who are mutatahhirin who purifies themselves be among those who are the best in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also you can uh, you know uh, pray tarawih uh, the night prayer you know after the fard uh, you know prayer subhanallah now as we know that we most likely will be praying at our homes the masajids are locked and ramadan is going to be a bit different for us but never lose hope as i said never ever lose hope create an ambience if you know the quran the most if you're a man lead your family you know if your son uh, knows it more let him lead uh, you know tarawih prayer and this is something which will help us to uh, gain that momentum which perhaps gets loose and when we don't go to the masjid you know so make your home the masjid subhanallah make your home uh, a, a, a place where you have that ambience that uh, you know environment where you can do the acts of worship more supremely more excellently inshallah and club uh, you know uh, uh, yourself in a uh, in tahajjud prayer uh, subhanallah qiyamul lail is something which is so powerful you know after for the prayer this is the prayer which is highly highly recommended and subhanallah we all uh, you know take uh, care of this in the month of ramadan so make sure it goes in a very uh, potential manner your qiyamul lail fix a time fix a place fix uh, uh, you know a, a proper agenda and the environment so you you are programmed for uh, doing that activity in a in a better way inshallah and uh, for those who uh, you know who are living in in places in countries where there is no lockdown you know uh, you can do a takaf you know seclusion in the last uh, you know uh, 10 days of ramadan uh, and have the real benefit uh, by being the guest of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now uh, something about tarawih because it is something which is constantly done uh, you know uh, in the month of ramadan uh, it's a sunnah uh, a sunnatul muqadda uh, to pray uh, tarawih so obviously we should not miss this out we should pray all throughout the ramadan this helps us to be connected and to be gathered as a family as well it creates and develops that bond as well walhamdulillah and know that it is uh, subhanallah uh, specific for ramadan uh, you know uh, apart from the other uh, nawafil prayer that you can pray any time throughout the year uh, uh, please don't get into argument of 8 rak'ah or 20 rak'ah focus on the quality of rak'ah we know the sunnah is 8 but you can't put any limit you can pray as much as you can how much ever you can insha allah uh, uh, make sure that you uh, don't ever miss your uh, your fard at the expense of now i will give give importance to fard salah the most and then comes your nawafil salah so subhanallah it's a programming subhanallah when we when we pray together you know with our family members subhanallah this this gives us the programming towards righteousness and well-being with our family as well so take this opportunity without losing hopes that you can't go to the masjid and try and reflect on what is recited you know if if you don't know much portion of the quran you as an imam can take the quran and read from it it's absolutely allowed for the imam not the muqtadi not those who are praying behind in the nawafil prayer in the volunteer prayer if you are taking the quran as an imam you recite it from the quran and you can lead tarawih salah throughout the month of ramadan and make sure that you 
you do it with dedication without you know giving the sense of, sense of hopelessness to your family who, whose morale, morale could be you know down because they could not go to the masjid so give them the boost and and motivate them and inspire them a lot for those who can do i'tikaf we know i'tikaf it means seclusion right and it can be done anytime the moment you enter into masjid you know uh, you can uh, start your niyyah of the i'tikaf and you will be rewarded until you exit from the masjid and it must be done in the masjid not at homes i'tikaf for some uh, uh, people they do it at home there is no proven uh, uh, evidence uh, to to prove that you know you can do it at your homes not for men not for women as well so uh, yes you can do dhikr you can do tilawatul quran you can do tadabbarul quran you can uh, recite and and do dhikr you can do you know a lot of activities which are nawafil at your home inshallah but not itikaf uh, as uh, as it's not prescribed you can uh, also if you are allowed to go to the masjid in the countries where you're living, uh, make sure that you, uh, as a sunnah, the last 10 nights of Ramadan are the uh, sunnah, the most recommended one. Uh, you can uh, do it, you know, with a with lot of uh, benefits. Subhanallah, it's, it's definitely a privilege to be the guest of Allah in the house of Allah subhanahu ta'ala in the blessed month of Ramadan. And make sure uh, that you increase your efforts during the month of Ramadan. Subhanallah, uh, we need to realize, my beloved brothers and sisters, and remember this hadith, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Ni'matan maghboonun fihima kathirun min nas as-sihhatu wal-faraag. Most of the people, most of us, we're neglected about two great blessings. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said about, what are those two blessings? Number one is our health. And number two is our free time. Subhanallah, to make the most of Ramadan, we need to stay healthy and we need to make sure that we use our time potentially. Subhanallah, we just cannot afford to lose our time. Rather, we must make sure that we use our time you know, before we lose our time and we lose Ramadan. Subhanallah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Ameen to uh, Angel Gabriel, you know, when uh, being on the pulpit, when Angel Gabriel, he said, you know, let him be destroyed, let him be, uh, you know, distend and cast out, subhanallah, who witnessed the month of Ramadan and could not gain the forgiveness of Allah, subhanahu Wa ta'ala, Allahu Akbar, my brothers and sisters, such strong terms are being used in this hadith to highlight that this is the month of forgiveness, this is the month of mercy, this is the month which requires a lot of preparation, this is the month which requires a lot of struggle, hard work, quality and quantitative ibadat, acts of worship. And subhanallah, when we don't focus on these, uh, you know, it will be very unfortunate to, to uh, witness the month of Ramadan and could not, you know, gain uh, Jannah, could not gain the forgiveness from Allah subhanahu ta'ala. So make sure that you use your time before you lose your time. Uh, so increase your efforts, you know, make your family awake, you know, especially the last 10 nights uh, of uh, Ramadan, we know that the Prophet ﷺ prescribed us to find out, to search Laylatul Qadr in the last 10 nights of Ramadan, the odd nights, right? The 21st, the 23rd, the 25th, the 27th, the 29th, all the odd nights. And it's always preferable as the Prophet ﷺ, he used to tighten his waist Meaning, he used to gird up fully to ensure to make use of Ramadan. In other words, to make the Ramadan most productive. This is how he used to prepare for Ramadan. To make sure that your family is awake, you know, in, in the last part of the night, they, they do dhikr of Allah, they engage themselves with the Quran, they do the uh, voluntary prayers, and they make sure that they make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the betterment of everyone. So, Making the last 10 nights of Ramadan is the crux of Ramadan. 
And subhanallah, may Allah Rabbul Izzah help us to gain that, that night of Laylatul Qadr, which is better than 1,000 months. Allahu Akbar. 87 years almost we will gain we will gain and we will capture the reward in one night can it be more productive than that subhanallah we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us gain that momentum that beautiful uh, and powerful night uh, which is better which has a lot of khair better than all uh, you know 1000 months subhanallah this is Something which we have to really ponder on. And subhanAllah, this is the smartest gift and the best gift to the ummah of the Prophet ﷺ. We know that the previous nations, they did not uh, live uh, very literal like us. You know, like we know the Prophet Nuh he did da'wah for 950 years. So imagine how much he, have, he would have lived and how much his people would have lived. So they had so many thousands of years to live upon. So obviously the more you live, the more good deeds, uh, uh, opportunity that you have. But we know that, you know, the ummah of the Prophet ﷺ has a shorter age span. But Allah give a gift to the ummah of the Prophet ﷺ, Laylatul Qadr, better than 1,000 months. So subhanAllah, my beloved brothers and sisters, it is so beautiful to, uh, you know, talk about Laylatul Qadr uh, alone. Uh, and in, in, in most cases, you know, subhanAllah, when we are awake, when we are in the dhikr of Allah, when we are making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we are uh, reciting and reflecting upon the Quran throughout the nights of Ramadan, all 10 nights, because we don't know when uh, uh, we will find uh, Laylatul Qadr. So making sure that the last 10 nights are reserved for the full dedication uh, of the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, inshallah, we will have the gift of Ramadan, uh, Laylatul Qadr. And inshallah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, uh, uh, to gain, uh, to, to, to provide us the uh, blessing and the mercy and the forgiveness in dunya so that we may inshallah become the ones who are pleased by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eventually we can gain the highest levels of jannah being in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam witnessing the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala my beloved brothers think about that moment think about that situation think about that time and hope about that inshallah we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to gain that momentum of, uh, of life uh, where we can actually witness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is Fawzul Azim. That is the greatest matter, subhanAllah. So we always aim for that. You know, uh, Ramadan uh, and other seasons, uh, other opportunities are given to us so that we may actually gain the momentum and gain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and gain the ultimate gift of witnessing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the highest levels of Jannah inshallah. So my beloved brothers and sisters, these are the focus areas that are uh, you know listed out for you. I have uh, with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala attempted to present it to you so that we may look at each aspect, each area, focus on it and make it a productive aspect so that every area can become the best area for us to make sure that we gain the fruits from each area, be it the relationship with the Quran, be it uh, making our salah uh, with khushu and most productive, making uh, our psalm you know, gain its objective that is taqwa, making the tawbah and repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remembering akhirah, making the dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, doing the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and performing all the voluntary acts uh, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My beloved brothers and sisters, again, remember, in order for making our Ramadan the most productive, we need to make sure that we make our our faith pure 
for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning, we worship only Allah without any association. Two, we need to do it for the sake of Allah, not to show off, not to uh, boast uh, that I'm fasting or I have completed, you know, three Jews in a day or one Quran in a night. No, no, no. This is not what we want to gain. We want to make sure that we are sincere and do things for the sake of Allah. And we need to make sure that we do things in the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and not for anything else. My beloved brothers, and sisters, in order to make it productive, productive, these are the conditions that we need to keep in mind and we need to practice in our uh, practices. And this is the way how we can, inshallah, with the help and the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, gain productivity of Ramadan and become the most productive Muslim who are not just productive in Ramadan, but they are productive, uh, you know, outside Ramadan as well. They charge their spiritual batteries and gain the momentum to do good throughout the year until we die. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in Surah Al-Hijr, Surah number 15, Ayah number 99, Allah Rabbul Izzah, he says, وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ Worship your Lord until certainty comes to you, until death comes to you. So my beloved brothers and sisters, uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us witness Ramadan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept uh, this service from us. Uh, we, are, uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, help us practice what we preach. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to gain the, uh, uh, the pleasure uh, of His, uh, you know, throughout our lives, inshallah, until we die. And uh, I would like to just... Uh, Go through some of uh, the questions perhaps uh, uh, you have asked. We have a few questions and few minutes left for our session to close down, inshallah. Uh, so let's take uh, questions. So one of the question is, can we pray tarawi putting the you know, uh, screen uh, on, the, on the TV channel, uh, the imam reciting it, and we pray in the mus- in, in our homes. Can we uh, follow him as an imam who is on TV, on screen, uh, and pray our tarawih because we uh, can't go to the masjid and the and uh, because of the lockdown uh, due to coronavirus, COVID nineteen. The answer is no. Uh, there is a condition for uh, uh, tarawi and that is jama and uh, and jama the main element is the imam so if you do not have the connection with the imam he is uh, on recording and you are live it is not allowed in islam so you choose one who knows the quran well and who has memorized the quran the most you make him as an imam and even if he doesn't know much he can as i said he can be an imam he can recite the Quran looking at the Mus'haf, inshallah, and the others can follow him, uh, uh, but they should not look in the Quran. They can just re- listen to the Quran. So uh, that is uh, something which we have to be careful about. Uh, always remember that we cannot do something which is not proven by the Sunnah, inshallah. So uh, the question is uh, uh, about the Hadith where the Prophet wasallam said, uh, you know, fasting is like an expiation of sins. You know, Allah Rabbul Izzah, He uh, forgives sins, uh, those who fast in the month of Ramadan with sincere faith and with good hopes, meaning attaining the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His sins will be forgiven. It refers to minor sins and not major. But always be hopeful and understand that your major sins can also be forgiven if you sincerely repent, right? There's one more question that came in. Uh, will our major sins be forgiven if we fast? Uh, well, the answer is your major sins and your mi- minor sins can be forgiven. As I mentioned in Surah Zumar, Surah number 39, Ayah number 51, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Inna Allah yaghfiru dhunuba jami'a. Allah forgives all your sins. So uh, making sure that you sincerely repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I mentioned uh, the conditions of sincere repentance is to number one, acknowledge it. Number two, stop it immediately. Number three, 
uh, always have this plan and intention not to go back to it. Number four, you need to make sure that you uh, seek forgiveness continuously and be remorse on that. And number five, if you have done something wrong to others, uh, you know, uh, then you have to compensate it. So be it major or minor, if you sincerely repent, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is willing to forgive you. As he said, لا تقنتو من رحمة الله. Do not be hopeless in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The key of productivity. You know, as I mentioned, the key of productivity is that you do any and every act with purity of faith. You know, having the pure faith and conviction uh, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means that you have belief in him, in his lordship, in his existence, in his essence, in his actions, in his decisions, in his, uh, you know, uh, uh, worship, in his divinity, in his names and attributes. When you have the belief in him with conviction, without associating any partners with him. Number two, you do things for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not for show off. Number three, it must be in line with the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa When you do these things, productivity comes in the form of acceptance of your deeds. Number one. So let's say if you do things which are not prescribed in the Quran and the teachings of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa throughout the month of Ramadan, you did so much of hard work, so much of energy is invested, so much of tilawat al-Quran, so much of, you know, uh, uh, practices which are not sometimes, you know, approved by the, by the Prophet sallallahu and in the Quran, then you would be at loss because you have to fulfill the basic conditions and that of acceptance of the deeds. Once that is done, then obviously all these, you know, ways and the aspects which we have gone through as a journey to make our journey most productive, that is what you need to focus on, inshallah. All right, highlight the importance of the Quran. Subhanallah, relationship with the Quran, uh, you know, apart from what I have mentioned, uh, is, is undoubtedly, it is the best book for us. In order to reflect on it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, man, uh, in, in Surah Taha, uh, Allah Rabbul Aiza, he says, those people who actually do not read the Qur'an, do not do the dhikr, Allah's dhikr, which is the Qur'an, they will be depressed in their lives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make them depressed in their lives. Allahu Akbar. And in the hereafter, they will be raised as blind people. This comes as a warning, subhanallah. Allah Rabbul Izzah, He gives this warning in the form of a mercy, subhanallah, because sometimes uh, we need to be warned so that we may, you know, abhor that practice and get back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, get back to the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when Allah says, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ أَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً دَنْكَ Whoever go away from my reminder, my remembrance, Allah will make his life a depressed life. And in the hereafter, he will be raised as blind person. So when we have eyes, when we have strength, when we have good health, my brothers and sisters, make sure that we get attached with the Quran. You know, the Prophet ﷺ, he would complain, uh, being the one who is the rahmatulillah alameen, he was the mercy for the entire creation. He would complain on the day of judgment. You know, وَقَالَ uh, Rasul, Ya Rabbi, inna qawm ittakhadu. Hadal Quran Mahjura. Oh my Lord, these are the people of my Ummah, my own nation, you know, who have abandoned the Quran. You know, and Ibn Qayyim Rahimahullah he said uh, the abandoning the Quran, uh, the hijra migration from the Quran in this ayah, it means not believing in it, not reading it, not understanding it, not memorizing it, not reflecting on it, not practicing it, not teaching it to others. SubhanAllah, all those the rights and, and uh, of the Quran and the duties that we have to fulfill. I mentioned all those things. So making sure that we uh, treat the Quran the way it is. Because remember, remember my brothers and sisters, Allah's Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Al-Quranu hujjatu lak aw alayk. The Quran is an evidence in favor of you 
or against you. So make sure that it goes in favor of you so that in the day of judgment, it will come as an intercessor and its intercession will be accepted. So subhanAllah, we can talk about the significance of the Quran, you know, again and again for hours altogether. But uh, it is important to ensure that Ramadan is the greatest month because Allah revealed the Quran in it. Because of the Quran, it became the greatest. And because of the Quran, subhanAllah, Allah gave it to Prophet he became the Imam Al-Anbiya. And because of the Quran, subhanAllah, Angel Gabriel, Jibreel alayhi salam become, uh, becomes the, the best of the all angels and the greatest of all. And subhanAllah, because of the Quran, we the ummah became the khayra ummah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, kuntum khayra ummah, ukhrijat nas. You're the best of people raised for mankind. So subhanAllah, with Quran, uh, as the Prophet he said, with the Quran, Allah Rabbul Aiza, he elevates the people, those who are the companions of the Quran. And he throws down the people, those who go away from it. So making sure that we have tight relationship with the Quran, uh, you know, is fulfilling the real purpose of the Quran in following all those ways. So my beloved brothers and sisters, I think we have a few more questions, but time is limited. Uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again to uh, uh, shower his choicest mercy on all of us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant peace and serenity in the world. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant his cure uh, because he is a shafi. He is a shafi, the curer. The curer. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the curer, to cure these, uh, you know, people who are suffering from this disease and other diseases like coronavirus. My beloved brothers and sisters, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us most productive. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to use our life and not lose our life. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the momentum in Iman. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant the sincerity in our actions because a lot of times, you know, our actions, uh, they are getting mixed with uh, show off or boasting or, you know, uh, uh, to put on, uh, you know, those are the paths which are of destruction. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us sincerity. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my beloved brothers and sisters, to enable us to go back to the masjid, inshallah, after this lockdown is done. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to clean and clear this and wipe out this disease coronavirus which is currently uh, bothering and, and and giving trouble and to millions of people worldwide we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala my beloved brothers and sisters to give strength and support and protection to our family to be prevented from this disease and others. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the protection for the whole of humanity. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our lives beneficial for others as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, the best of you are those who are the most beneficial for the humanity. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who remember where we belong. We belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to Him we shall re return. So remembering Allah and Akhirah helps us to do the correction in our actions in this life. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give the mercy and, and grant the uh, cure for those who are already you know, facing this trouble f with this disease and others. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive all of us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our parents. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, grant Jannatul Firdaus al-A'la, the highest levels of Jannah to our parents who have passed away. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the protection and the well-being of 
the uh, rulers of this beautiful nation, the United Arab Emirates. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for their protection, for their well-being and the well-being of the people and the well-being of all the Muslim lands. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the well-being of the entire humanity. My beloved brothers and sisters, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept this effort from us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to uh, grant uh, you know mercy and uh, his his uh, forgiveness to every one of us we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept and bless everyone who was behind uh, you, you know making this uh, webinar live we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all the brothers and the sisters who have watched it and may allah rabbul izza make it a point of benefit in our lives so that inshallah we can get the reward from it continuously, even if we depart this world. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.